Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Grandmaster Andre Glenn of 360 Combat Systems. Welcome back to Blade 101. And today, we're going to discuss the spine of the blade. But more importantly, the characteristics of the difference between a swedge and a false edge. There's a big difference. Some people get confused on what's the difference between the two. Now, when I mean the spine of the blade, give you an example. This is a blade. This is the spine of the blade. See that how, how the, the spine of the blade is always thicker? Now, what we're going to discuss is this part. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. See how that little is beveled on both sides? Now, this is the blade part and the edge, this is sharpened. This would be considered the swedge, okay? I can't cut myself on that part, okay? can't cut myself on this part that's why it's considered a swedge versus a false edge now the false edge will be considered if I took this and this was sharpened okay if this was sharpened why well, I had, can cut myself with it this is the primary edge this would be the false edge okay that's the only difference if you sharpen this now what is the switch what's the purpose of it okay now the purpose of the switch is to reduce the weight of the blade and also improve the penetration that's why it has the angle on it to improve my penetration okay also to enhance the balance of the blade so I'm using it to improve my penetration reduce my weight of the blade also and enhance my balance that's is the definition of a switch we also discuss the false edge primary edge false edge false edge can only be on the spine of the blade okay it's that little bit from here to here now, if it was all the way down the entire back side of the spine of the blade, that would be considered a double-edged knife. So let's be clear. This false edge only goes probably about two inches, okay, from tip. And it's only located on the spine of the blade, okay? Now, the other thing that people want to ask about in today's lesson, we're going to cover this, is the linear hole. I put this on here, it's on here. People say, why do knives have linear holes on? To attach rope. Just in case I lose this and it's hanging. Or just in case I want to tie it to something. Now, this was in particular because it has three different, you can see through the holes, see one, two, three linear holes to it. So I can attach it to a, um, just say I had a, a branch. I wanted to make a spear. I want to go hunting with it. I would use it for that. If I w didn't want it to lose this, I would attach it and attach it to my belt. Just like I have a linear for my weapon and attach it to my weapon. If I drop my weapon in combat, get my hand shot or whatever, it dangles, same thing. But you want to make sure you do here and grab this same thing as you have them grab your weapon as soon as possible. That keeps you from grabbing it or letting it fall and you don't know where it's at. 
The other part is a lot of people put lanyards on knives when they put them in their pocket. So they have something to hold on to to get the knife faster. Or they have a sheath that comes up extremely high and that lanyard actually helps them hold the knife and find the knife. Me personally, I don't like anything on my knife attached to it because it might get snagged on something, especially you know how I, how I do my loadouts. Uh, let's look at another blade consideration and we'll talk about this swedge or a false edge so we have a deeper understanding of it. This karambit knife. You see, this is the spine of the karambit knife. You see this has a beveled edge. This will be considered a what? A false edge or a swedge? This would be considered a swedge because I cannot cut myself on this, okay? Once again, it's used for enhancing balance, reducing weight, and penetration, enhancing my penetration capabilities, okay? Now, let's look at another example. Uh, this tomahawk, okay? Look at the back of it. This is the spine. But this really don't have a pronounced edge on it. Even though it has bevels on it, I'm trying to see if you can get, get a good picture so you can see the bevels on each side of it. And I can still penetrate coconuts, heads, body parts, muscle. But I still really can't just cut myself on it. But with weight, it will penetrate. This would be considered a false edge. Okay? So now you see the difference? Now, that will conclude today's lesson on the swedge, the false edge, and also the linear hole. Thank you for coming and enjoying this video. Please share, like, subscribe because information is power, information is key. The more information you have, the better choices that you would be able to choose when deciding a weapon or knife or machete for your self-preservation, which means your self-defense. Thank you for coming. My name is Grandmaster Andre Glenn. Check out 360 Combat website for more information. Drop me an email, drop me a post on the website or on one of these social media platforms. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Peace, love, and happiness.